Hello and welcome everybody and thank you guys for joining me again. My name is Wilkie and I'm here with another For Honor guide, but this one is specifically tailored towards the Warden players. This is a hero guide for Warden and basically I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown of Warden's moveset and in the second part of the video I'll be talking about certain techniques, um, I guess something you could call bread and butter technique and also give you some insight on why Warden is probably one of the most controversial heroes currently in the game. But without, b b before we actually start with the actual guide, I'm going to show you a little troll sequence um, that might elaborate and might give you an idea why Warden is uh, as infamous and the cause of a lot of salt and toxicity as it currently is. So the reason why I showed you this footage is not to teach you how to play because as I said this is not how to play Warden and this is not how Warden higher level or higher tier play will be looking like. As soon as people get to know how to disengage and a lot of heroes can already or a lot of heroes can't punish Wardens for just repeatedly spamming um, shoulder bash. So definitely definitely do not, I highly highly do not recommend getting used to that playstyle only. Warden, it's a signature move of Warden, so don't discard it. It is definitely a good tool. However, the, the thing is that currently no hero other than the Warden has this sort of ability. So it gives Warden, at least in that regard, a very, very peak position over the other heroes. However, due to the fact that there is a lot of uh, frustration already going through the community, a lot of salt, a lot of toxicity, there is a very, very high chance that in one way or another, this mechanic might be changed. Maybe it will never be changed, I'm not sure, but at least I believe there will be some changes in the future, so I definitely recommend not putting all of your effort and all of your mechanical skills in the game on that shoulder bash of Warden. Another thing that I think why it's incredibly uh, not the smartest idea to do is because it's boring as hell, it involves very little skill if you just spam it, it's frustrating for new players, like incredibly fr frustrating for new players and you're not really learning how to use any of the other mechanics so if you ever decide to play another hero other than warden and i know the conqueror also has this bash but he's far from that effective than warden's shoulder bashes keep in mind you don't have that tool at all and i played a lot of the other classes or heroes my bad and trust me nobody feels as easy to engage as warden not even Shigoki, not even I don't know. I don't. I don't think any other hero offers such a smooth and good opening for a fight as well as a combo potentially. But yeah, without further ado, let's go into the basic section of the Warden. We'll just be talking about the moves. I'm just gonna break down the moves the Warden has, and then in the second or third part rather of the guide, we'll be going into combos, bread and butter techniques and uh, certain gameplay aspects you should be considering using or you might want to know when you want to play Warden. So the first basic move we're going to talk about is Warden's side light attacks. Now they aren't the fastest side light attacks but they come with a unique property. It's not really but they come with a property that if you land the first hit from either left or right the second one from the same direction will be a guaranteed hit for extra damage. The next attack we're going to talk about is Warden's Top Light. Now this is one of Warden's best moves, it's one of the fastest uh, light attacks in the game. It's a very good poke, however, it does not come with the combo property the side lights do. So even if you hit the first light from the top, the second one can still be blocked as you can see the bot just did there. For side and heavies, we have the side heavies which deal a decent amount of damage, but they are relatively slow and uh, easy to predict as well as parry. So the only safe way to use them is either after you baited the enemy out or simply after a guard break that will guarantee you to hit a side light from either the left or the right. For Warden's top heavy, which is the hardest hitting move wardens have, there is a little bit of an issue, or rather the price 
in order to land it successfully. Even after a guard break, which you can see right now, you are not able to land a top heavy, the enemy will simply be able to block. So the only way to actually properly land a top heavy as a warden is to either throw the enemy to the ground when they're out of stamina or grab them and bash them into a wall. Keep in mind though that the grab game of wardens is not that great so this is a bit of a risky move and always make sure that whenever you go for a top heavy after grab the enemy actually gets staggered. Warden's zone attack is another one of those very very quick and pokey moves. Comes at a heavier price of 50% of your stamina but is really quick, has very long range. Only other downside is that it always comes out from your right so the enemy is left so they can at least predict it and block it. Let's move on to Warden's first trademark move. This trademark move is called Shoulder Bash and is pretty much the reason why Warden is deemed very broken, OP and cancerous. Anyways, to activate Shoulder Bash you basically have two ways. The first way is by dashing in any direction. That includes forward or backwards and then inputting your guard break button. This will allow you to charge the Shoulder Bash. The second way is after you hit any light attack, be it top or side be it two side attacks or one top or two top attacks, it does not matter. The other thing about this move is you can charge it to cover more distance with a charge, but in return you will knock the enemy further away, eliminating any possibilities to combo them with your side chain or anything else afterwards. So keep that in mind and uh, I'll be covering more of the techniques in the advanced section coming soon. On to Warden's second trademark move, and that is Crushing Counter-Strike. The input is very similar to a parry, however the timing is a bit stricter. Basically what you have to do, instead of trying to parry a top attack with a heavy attack, you input a light attack instead, and that will trigger Crushing Counter-Strike, dealing pretty high amounts of damage and potentially leaving them open for a shoulder bash follow-up if they do not react appropriately. Now for the advanced section I'm just going to talk about a few clips that I had and I recorded while I was playing Warden. Keep in mind these are not the best enemies and I'm also not the best Warden. So I'm just going to show you and elaborate a few things here and there to show you the strengths as well as the weaknesses of Warden. You can right now in this clip see a very apparent weakness of the shoulder bash if you do not cancel it. And that is sidestepping characters like the Rochi can say can very easily dodge it and if they opt in for the side attack, they can easily hit you and you will take damage in return but they will not be able to get bashed. So keep that in mind that the shoulder bash is not an omnipotent weapon to say so. It, it's, it works against pretty much every enemy if you use it right, um, but certain heroes can counter it rather easily while others cannot. So always keep that in mind what hero you're playing against, what um, the playstyle of your enemy is like as the personality. Is that guy more aggressive? Is he more defensive? And things like that. That all come into account on how you approach enemies and um, in what way you should use shoulder bash. If you should use shoulder bash because like I said if people know how it works, if people know what it looks like, it can actually be punished relatively easily. So for the next clip I'm fighting another warden. He's not really that good but for the first round I decided to not use my shoulder burst very often. The guard break you just see was a prime example of how the pressure works because he was most likely expecting me to go for another shoulder bash and uh, he anticipated it so he dodged sideways but instead all I did was throw in a guard break and since he dodged that was true. The rest of the first round is relatively boring because literally all we do is just spam each other with top light attacks in order to get a hit in. Um, we just constantly keep blocking and then I burn all my stamina and uh, he capitalizes on that because I try to go for the top parry while out of stamina he punishes it very well and for some reason I totally goofed that last hit at the end even though it was pretty pretty obvious. So for the second round against the same guy, the start was a bit weird, then I decided to go for a top feint and I whiffed my punish, I s decided to go for another one, he took it and this time it worked. A follow up with a shoulder bash, another shoulder bash, he anticipated it and dodged rightly sideways in order to let me dash into the void. 
Now I slowed the following part a bit down. I opened with a shoulder bash, he anticipated another one, I waited, took the guard break opportunity, then went for another top feint, he took it and he got punished with yet another crashing counter strike. I think this is one of the um, best showcases of Warden's toolkit and how to punish people for certain moves and I think this was a very very decent usage of both the crashing counter strike and the shoulder bash. Now for the last, uh, I guess, guide-ish part in this video, I'm gonna show the last round against this guy. I open up with another shoulder bash, he was then afraid once again of a follow-up and he dodged sideways. And I punished it with another shoulder bash. He tried to get his own shoulder bash and I just punished it accordingly because it was very obvious. Now this part is super weird. I actually failed to go for the top heavy, but he failed to parry it. And uh, then he dashed once again because he was probably expecting another shoulder bash, but that didn't happen, and thus he got guard broken once again. So this concludes my Warden Guide. Now keep in mind this is surely not everything Wardens can do. There is a lot of mind gaming, a lot of potential for every hero, especially Warden at this point. Uh, keep in mind what I said initially, there might be mechanical changes to Warden in the future. I don't know yet, there hasn't been any um, message or the devs did not say anything if there's gonna be a change or not. Anyways, the following footage is just me playing an elimination match in the background so you have something to watch at. That was uh, in a very early stage of my Warden playing, so uh, it's not exactly super good and I cheese the hell out of this Nabushi, just like uh, out of a Raider. Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you Warden guys, I assume mostly Warden uh, players are gonna watch this, and if you all play any other heroes or people that actually don't play Warden are watching this, hopefully you might actually learn how Warden works and that might make it easier to counter it in the future. So uh, yeah. Like I said, this concludes really the guide section. Um, like I said, the, the potential is uh, sort of unlimited. The only limitation is literally the stamina in the game. Um, I've had rounds where we mind gamed our asses out when we fainted like three, four times in a row until one of us ran out of stamina. Uh, so there is still a lot, a lot, a lot. The game has to show us a lot. The players like myself and also the whole player base in general has to learn. So give the game probably another two to three, maybe a month, two to three weeks, maybe a month, and uh, you'll probably see changes in the game mechanics as well as what heroes will be frequently played. Currently there will be, um, accordingly to according to the um, patch notes, or I guess pre-release patch notes, the devs plan on buffing Valkyrie, fixing Conquerors and Warlords, and there is supposedly going to be a change regarding how guard breaks can be countered, but this is not set in stone yet, so this is really something that we will just have to wait and see for. So like I said, this concludes my Warden Guide. Hopefully you guys learned something, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be making any guides in the near future, because I'm not sure if I'm qualified to talk about many things in the game yet, as I still have to learn quite a bit of myself, and I'm currently switching between heroes very often, so uh, Warden is literally the only one I played for quite a bit, and I played Warden in Alpha and Beta, so this is why I do have my most knowledge from. So uh, yeah, like I said, I'll just leave the footage running in the background. Thank you guys for sticking around for so long, hopefully you guys learned something. If there's anything unclear or anything you, you want to criticize or tell me that I should do better or anything, feel free to let me know, I'm always welcome to hearing criticism or as well as positive feedback. I don't really care as long as it's good feedback. So uh, if you have anything to say or if you feel like you should let me know or there's something I might be able to improve upon, definitely feel free to drop it in the comment section below or even a message wherever feels more comfortable for you. So the footage is about to end and uh, yeah, hopefully I see you guys in my next video as well.